Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Energy City Plugged In Podcast, where we talk about the latest in news, sports, entertainment, and energy related stories in the Estevan area. The Energy City Plugged In Podcast is sponsored by Estevan Mercury Publications. And joining me this week is the sports reporter for Estevan Mercury Publications, Corey Atkinson. Corey, this is your first time on the podcast, so it's great to have you here. Well, thank you very much for having me here. It's uh, it's great to be here, and it's it's good to be um, able to talk about sports in a, in a nice and friendly setting here. Thank you. Uh, so obviously, you know, when you talk about sports in Estevan, uh, for a lot of people, the first thing they t- think about is the Power Dodge Estevan Bruins. Uh, how have the Bruins been doing lately? It's been going uh, pretty well uh, for the most part. I mean, they had a really good early start to the season. And then um, over the last couple of weeks or so, maybe three or four weeks, they've uh, been sort of floundering around 500. And, and this is not the kind of team that you want to have around 500. No. They've got some scoring. They've got uh, a, a defense that's that's quite good at moving the puck up. They should be doing a little bit better than what they are. But, I mean, with that said, they're still in first place. They're still, um, they've still got a really good part of the schedule in front of them that's going to be really friendly over the next couple of weeks. So uh, we'll see if they can put some distance between themselves and Weyburn. A lot of home games between now and Christmas and then after Christmas and before the Sastel Tankard, correct? Right, right. And, and so this is the part of the season where you want to make a little bit of hay and, uh, and, again, start putting some distance between yourself and, uh, and the teams below you in the division so that you, you do have that home ice in the first round at least. One of the concerns that you you've uh, that I've heard about the Bruins over the last couple of years is they play to the level of their opponents. And for those who have that perception of the team, I think they will use last week as ammunition. They lose to Yorkton, didn't play well, beat Battlefords in what was, by all accounts, a, a great game. Uh, does it seem like they are suffering from that syndrome right now? A, a little bit of that. And, and I think it's a little bit of a whole mental preparation going into a game where uh, you are playing to the level of your opponent despite what you might think. And this team has also been plagued a little bit uh, in recent weeks from slow starts. And uh, against a team like the Battlefords, you can't afford to do that. <laughs> so maybe your mental approach is a little bit different going into that and and then if it's Yorkton you think well if they're up by two goals or whatever we're we're the Estevan Bruins we can score at will so we'll we'll just outscore them later mm-hmm. um, and they, they did that in a game in Yorkton earlier this year yeah yeah and they did and they have they've done that to, to Battlefords too earlier this year too but by the same token you you just can't approach every game like that and you're, you're just setting yourself up for a fall so you start the defensive battles early you start you start pounding them with hitting uh, on the four check early and hopefully that'll lead to some, uh, you know, better games for the Bruins where they're not, uh, you know, grinding their teeth trying to trying to hold on to a lead against uh, a team that they should be beating quite handily. How does do some of the new guys like uh, Arthur Miller and Jake Tesarowski look? Oh, I like Miller a lot. I like I like Jake too because I, I'm I'm watching the forwards more often than I'm watching the defensemen, uh, and I like the way Arthur Miller plays the game. He's right to the net all the time. He's uh, he moves the puck well. Um, and he's got a little bit of a b- bit of a nasty streak too. I mean, I wouldn't want to play against him. Um, and and Tezarowski, like he's he's a good, solid guy on that on that blue line. Um, yeah, I, I I have a lot of good things to say about this defense because they they do move the puck well. Um, and so with that, I mean, with the, the kinds of players that they've been able to get, I think they've they're a better team than when they were to start the season. So, what do you view as some of the you know, maybe the most pressing need for this team between now and the January 10th trade deadline. Would I it be in goal or? I, I don't even know if they need anything right now. I just think they need to be a little bit better consistent uh, together. They, they've they got the top six that are there uh, that are going to be there for. Uh, I, I don't have any problem with going to the playoffs with that top six. Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 the top six forwards. The top six forwards, right. Yeah. And so on uh, this the third and fourth line, Maybe you get a guy for that, but I mean that's you don't need to have to pay for for that much. A, a um, veteran grinder who's been to the dance before. Then. Sure, sure, yeah, and and I don't think you need much more than that. Uh, on defense, I think the defense is good where it is right now. There's eight guys, so maybe you um, maybe you drop one of those guys. I don't know, but uh, we'll see how Bo Dider works uh, in the next few weeks to see if they need any more goaltending. It, it seems like he's the kind of goaltender that they would need in order to mm-hmm. um, you know take themselves. To, uh, a little bit more seriously as a contender, not just for the division, but for the league. So uh, when you add a 20-year-old goaltender, that's a signal that you're saying, I think these guys can do 
great things. We just need a little bit more veteran presence in the in net. Well, my best friend's father uh, lives in Salmon Arm and is a season ticket holder for this Salmon Arm uh, Junior A team. And he told me, you know, you're going to really like having Bo Dider uh, here in Estevan. So that uh, certainly was a uh, well confidence. He's certainly an experienced guy. Yeah, I talked to him the other day. He's a he's a really good. Uh, I, I think that he's really looking forward to playing here. So I, I think that helps a lot too. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Corey. Uh, when we come back, we're going to get an update on the local minor hockey scene here in Estevan. But first, we have a word from our sponsor. Are you playing the Estevan Mercury's Business Bingo Contest? On November 1st, we started our Christmas promotion, and it is going strong. You could win a $2,500 cash prize or weekly prize packages. Uh, playing the Estevan Mercury Publications Business Bingo promotion is easy. Cut your bingo card out of your Mercury or Southeast Lifestyles, take it shopping with you, and earn your stamps. Once you have five stamps in a row, bring your card to the Mercury office to enter the draw. You can play multiple cards and enter as often as you like. Draws are made every Wednesday at 5, so play today. And welcome back. Joining me once again is Corey Atkinson, the sports reporter for Estevan Mercury Publications. Of course, Corey, we talked about the Bruins in the opening segment. You can't talk... uh, Hockey in Estevan without talking minor hockey. Uh, how have the local minor hockey teams been doing so far this year? I think the the, the bright spot for the leagues um, it's been the Midget Double A Apex Bruins. Uh, they've uh, they've added uh, a, a new coach of the last uh, after the first few games, and they've really turned their season around to the, where they're one of the top three or four teams in the league. Um, they've got some good scoring again, as typical of Estevan teams. They got some good scoring. They've got a, a pretty good defense that are uh, good, at, especially on the power play, at moving the puck around and, and finding their spots. But um, this team, I think, is uh, it, it could be doing some really good things this year. Of course, that coach is Robin Ulrich, who is no stranger to local hockey fans With between their time playing here and then she went off, did some great things at the U of S, University of Saskatchewan, both as a player and as a coach. Uh, it just seemed like when she came back and she became the coach, it turned everything around mm-hmm. and she's a she's a very good fit for that team and and the the, the guys you can tell that there's uh that they respect her and that they like uh playing for her and uh it, it seems like things are again things are going really well they're playing uh very good hockey offensively and uh defensively they're shutting it down when they need to um there's probably still a little bit of work to go with them but yeah for right now it, it, things seem to be going pretty well right before christmas how are the other teams doing um, it's it's a bit of a struggle sometimes because there's been some injuries with some of the other teams. Uh, I know the uh, the Bantam Double A's have been having a little bit of injury issues. They've uh, they've had tournaments where they've you know lost players because of their their injuries. And uh, um, Pee Wee's again uh, a, a similar situation where you're having tournaments that aren't going so well for these these teams. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, when it comes to losing players to injury, so uh, it's uh, this, as the second half starts, I'm, I'm sure they probably all want to have. Uh, uh, just kind of a, a little bit of a refresh on these things. Um, the girls' uh, midget double A's have been having a very good season as well. Uh, and again, they're, they're top three or four of the league. So uh, once the Bearcats get going again, um, you'll probably see them a little bit also at the, uh, at the Sask games. But um, these, are, these are some pretty good teams among the girls' teams, especially the, the higher echelon, um, the, the Bantams and the... Uh, the midget double A's for uh, the Bearcats. I know the Adam May, the Adam team just won a tournament in Regina on the weekend, and midget double A's seem to always have really good teams. And you know, coaching there, it's always been strong. It's always been a strong suit of them, but they for them, but they always have that good uh, pipeline of talent as well. Oh, for sure, uh, Marcy LeBlanc is, is uh, an otherworldly talent. Should um, would maybe be playing midget triple A uh, in, in a different scenario here. Uh, they've also got some pretty good talented forward too, uh, and and they have three goaltenders, and either one of them can can win a game at any point. Well, Marcy LeBlanc's uh, sister uh, Megan was probably the best. Since the uh, you, know, you saw a real resurgence in in girls hockey in Estevan around eight or ten years ago, and Marcy LeBlanc is probably Mar- Mar- Marcy LeBlanc's sister is probably the best player that I've seen. I think her one year in midget A, she averaged a hat trick a game, mm-hmm. and she was lights out. So it's certainly no surprise that uh, Marcy would have inherited some of those skills mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. She's getting more than a goal a game uh, in, in midget in, double A. So in double A. Yeah, so she's, yeah, she's right up there among the top talent in the province. Excellent. Uh, switching gears. Uh, actually, one more thing on the minor hockey. The, the team's been doing well with the coping with the 
you know, the closure of the Civic and going down to two ice surfaces and being forced to travel to being fate and other rinks to play? Oh, it, it's been it's been really tough for them to find games because I was, uh, you know, talking to um, Amanda Minchin with the, the Adam the girls uh, Bearcats, and she was saying that even like a few days ago, they, they weren't sure exactly where they were going to play. It was either going to be at uh, Power Dodge or it was going to be at Affinity for their Monday night game. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to Monday night games, when it comes to like Sunday games or something like that, mm-hmm. it's really tough to find the ice time at uh, Affinity or Power Dodge Ice Center. So they have to go to places like Norquay or Bean Fay or, um, you know, Alameda or, or other areas that are just like ridiculously far away if you were to think about uh, – uh, how it was at the start of the season. So yeah. it's I, I feel for these teams and these parents that have to just like truck their kids around so much uh, just for practicing, uh, let alone the actual games. So yeah. It's it's a tough situation for everybody. You know, and I covered sports after Monday night hockey is very very rare to be covering around here. So it mm-hmm. kind of shows how little uh, how ice time is now at a premium. Uh, switching gears from one form of youth sports to another. High school basketball is uh, now underway. How are the those uh, senior boys and girls teams doing so far this year? Well, it's it's going to be very uh, interesting to see. I, I know the boys had a tournament in. Uh, uh, don't know exactly where the tournament was, but uh, they're they had a little bit of an issue uh, in in terms of like, getting together again. Um, it's it's early season basketball. It's before Christmas, so you don't really want to put too much weight on them. But uh, I know that the girls are going to be uh, playing in not in 5a this year they're going to be in 4a which is it's it's going to help them a lot uh, when it comes to regionals because these are teams now you're not going to be playing the the greatest like regina huge schools anymore Mm -hmm. you're going to be playing like the teams that you probably should be playing like the moose jaws and the um you know some of the other smaller smaller cities so uh to have the girls playing in that um you know maybe they go back to provincials again who knows but uh the boys i think are going to be a little bit of a work in progress to start the season so once they get going i'm sure by the time the mcleod series rolls around like these teams are going to be uh firing on all cylinders well estevan's won the last three mcleod series it's really breathed life back into that rivalry with wayward to have estevan doing so well so yeah, everyone in town's going to be hoping that by the time McLeod rolls around, that the the boys and girls teams are both uh, firing on all cylinders. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I, I know, like before Christmas, basketball is a little bit of a different beast than it is after Christmas because there's just so much to do um, that's beyond sports that these kids have. You know, they're absolutely, doing, they're, they're like it's it's a different season once you get uh, to like January 3rd, you know, once that starts, you know, the, the real serious athletic competitions happen in basketball. So, um, again, I, I wouldn't put too much weight or anything into what's happening here in December. Excellent. Thank you, Corey. Uh, coming up next, uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, upcoming Sastel Tankard Men's Provincial Curling Championships, which will be in Estevan it, coming up next month. But first, another word from our sponsor. Are you playing the Estevan Mercury's Business Bingo Contest? On November 1st, we started our Christmas promotion, and it is going strong. You could win a $2,500 cash prize or weekly prize packages. Uh, playing the Estevan Mercury Publications Business Bingo promotion is easy. Cut your bingo card out of your Mercury or Southeast Lifestyles, take it shopping with you, and earn your stamps. Once you have five stamps in a row, bring your card to the Mercury office to enter the draw. You can play multiple cards and enter as often as you like. Draws are made every Wednesday at 5, so play today. All right, and welcome back. I want to thank Deanna Tarnas for the uh, information on the Estevan Mercury Publications Business Bingo promotion, which has been going uh, very well so far uh, So far this uh, the last few weeks. And uh, we have one more draw date on December the 14th before the big final draw on December 21st. And I want to send my congratulations to Bonnie Reese, who was this week's winner of the uh, Mercury uh, Business Bingo promotion. So be sure to go visit the participating businesses and get your uh, your bingo cards stamped and bring them by the Estevan Mercury Publications office. Corey, welcome back for our final segment. Thank you. And it's, so, of course, the other big thing that's going to be going on sports-wise in Estevan uh, – Coming up early next year is the Sasktel Tanker, the Men's Provincial Chet Curling Championship. How are plans going for that? Uh, it seems like they're going really well. Uh, it seems like they've uh, they still need a whole lot of uh, volunteers and things like that. But I I think generally 
what is going on is uh, is pretty pretty good for what uh, uh, what's going to be going on here. I mean, this is uh, it, it takes a lot of preparation to put on a major event, and they want to make this a major event. So uh, the Tankard, I think, is going to be a, a really good uh, showcase for. Uh, not just only the curlers, but I mean the city and the facility to maybe have uh, future events like this um, coming up in, in the coming years. Uh, so yeah, it's at Affinity Place, and when Affinity Place opened in t- 2011, one of those events that people thought would look great in Affinity was the Tankard. The first team to qualify for the Tankard was Brent Geddick, our local favorite. Uh, how much of a boost was it to have, not only to have Brent qualify for the event, but to have him qualify so early on, I think it, it gives people a chance to say, you know, maybe this is the kind of event that he can win on his home ice, even though he's he's never curled at Affinity like nobody has. <laughs> I mean, this is it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a different beast uh, curling at uh, Affinity versus uh, the Power Dodge Curling Center. Um, it's uh, the ice is gonna be a little bit different. It's, it's gonna be a little bit more fans. Uh, it's it's gonna be something that uh, he's not. I don't know if he's quite used to curling in, in this kind of an atmosphere mm-hmm. at home. So uh, it's going to be neat to see him. Um, it, it should help sell tickets, you would think. And I think they want to see as many people in Affinity Place as possible uh, when his uh, when his games are, for sure. I know we won't know the full field for the tankard, and I think, until a few days or a week before the event. But you know, how good of the, is the competition or the level of the teams going to be for the tankard? Well, when you realize that one of the teams that's likely going to be a a big factor in winning it is uh, going to be the Laycock rink, Uh, they are not qualifying for the Olympics. So this means that they're going to be able to focus now on trying to qualify for the Briar. And how you qualify for the Briar is by winning here. So Mm -hmm. uh, when you've got when you've got the Laycock rink coming, that uh, that means I think everybody is kind of going to be deciding who's going to be playing in the final <laughs> against them uh they're that good of a rink so once you've got that sorted out um yeah i think it's going to be anybody's dis- anybody's game to see like who's in the uh, top three or four teams once uh you know the playoffs and all that hit of course one of the perks of this year's tankard is the briar is in regina correct mm-hmm. so right, yeah you, know, you you get you win here and you know you're gonna get to Curl in Regina for nationals. Mm-hmm. This is a uh, this is one of the big carrots here about it is that uh, it, it's it's a great thing to have uh, at the tankard here because you're only got to go to go to the Briar for two hours away. Um, the, the home teams, the quality of the home teams that are going to be playing uh, are going to try to play for Saskatchewan in the Briar. Um, you know that's maybe a little bit more than what it would be in a non-Olympic year, but yeah, I, I I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, the really good teams playing here. Um, and there's there's so many teams that are, you know, that could be in that top four, uh, mm-hmm. other than Laycock. I mean, Geddick's certainly right up there with them. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Corey. And uh, so thanks for joining us today and joining us for the first time on the Energy City Plugged In podcast. I want to thank uh, producer William Acri for doing a great job again this week. And I want to thank all of you for, for listening and tuning in. Uh, I want to thank our sponsor, Estevan Mercury Publications, uh, for the continued support. And uh, once again, thanks for listening. My name is David Wilberg, and we'll see you next time.